Guys, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and Google Pixel 7 Pro have the best smartphone cameras in the world. So I decided to put them to the ultimate camera test and see exactly which one has the world's best smartphone camera. And let's just say the results are pretty shocking. So let's get into it. Now, of course, the megapixels on these cameras are pretty important. So the 14 Pro Max has a 48 megapixel camera, the Google Pixel 7 Pro has a 50 meg camera, and the Samsung S23 Ultra has a whopping 200 megapixel camera. So I tried to test them in multiple different locations with different lighting conditions, colors, environments, to really see the results. And don't get me wrong, all these pictures are so great, but Samsung did seem to always oversaturate the colors, like a lot. The 14 Pro Max was good, but nothing super impressive, and the Pixel overall was great great and had the best definition in the rocks. When it comes to color accuracy, as mentioned, Samsung just oversaturated again, and I did have seen Optimizer off for all of these. iPhone and Pixels were both great and closest to real life. I also asked you guys which photo you preferred the most, and let's just say the results were super surprising, but we'll get to that a bit later on. When it came to the ultra wide, once again, Samsung oversaturated, and to me it's just so noticeable. The iPhone was way too dark, but Pixel handled everything really well, and it is slightly wider than the other. The two. So then I wanted to test out all their dynamic range in full blown sunlight. So just keep in mind, I was in direct sun when I took these pics, and the S23 Ultra did a good job, but it was a little bit dark. The 14 Pro Max and Pixel 7 Pro looked the most similar and definitely had the most details in the shadows, especially on those buildings. And because of all that, I would say the best point and shoot camera has got to go to the Pixel 7 Pro, but not by a landslide. Now let's see who wins at night. Now onto night shots, I had so much fun testing these out and I made sure all three phones had night mode turned on just to make sure they were using the right lenses specifically for low light shots. And let me just say, it is shocking to me at how well these three phones did at low light, but when you zoom in, you'll notice the pixel handled lighting and details much better than the other two. It's actually so hard to tell these three pics apart, but when you look at the cloud, the pixel was a bit cool tone, iPhone was a bit warm tone, and Samsung seemed to get it just right. But what's even more crazy is that all these phones cameras have gotten so good, you can take pictures of the stars or the night sky with them. That's just out of this world. <laughs> so even though they all have night mode, the outcomes were not equal. iPhone's pics were so noisy, Samsung's color was good, but Pixel definitely had the most detail. So I'm not gonna lie, that was a pretty tough round between Samsung and Pixel, but Pixel just came in with that detail every single time and nailed those night shots. Well done, Pixel. Okay, so the zoom capabilities on these phones are actually quite different from one another. For optical zoom, the Pixel 7 Pro has five times, the 14 Pro Max has three times zoom, and the S23 Ultra has 10 times optical zoom. So in case you didn't know, this type of zoom is where the camera actually mechanically zooms in. So the quality is generally really good. And there is no doubt about it, Samsung's optical zoom is impeccable. It has the most amount of zoom and detail by far. Then for digital zoom, the Pixel 7 Pro has 30 times, the 14 Pro Max has 15 times, and the S23 Ultra has a 100 times zoom. And so now digital zoom is where the phones actually use software to enlarge the image, and generally the quality is lower. So I didn't test this with pictures of the moon, but you'll see on Big Ben, Samsung smashed it out the park, iPhone couldn't even really compete, and Pixel did a pretty good job. So it's safe to say that Samsung definitely took the zoom round and did an amazing job at not only optical zoom, but also digital zoom. So that's how they look far away, but how do these cameras compare close up? On to macro mode, and this is all about picking up tiny details that you wouldn't normally see with the human eye, and you'd be amazed at what these cameras can capture. So here's a picture I took of sea stones, and while the pixel did not do too badly, Samsung had more detail and some nice colors. Here's an even better example I took of the inside of a flower, and Samsung did just have more detail, where you can even see this like a furry texture. And what's also nice is all three of these phones actually automatically switch to macro mode as soon as you get close to a subject. So I thought there would be a pretty big difference between how close you can get to the subject, but they're all pretty much the exact same. So here's another example I took of a $1 bill, and I'm not gonna lie, they all did a great job, but when you zoom in even more on a macro shot, it's only then that you really see all the different details. Honestly, Samsung surprised me with this one because it was able to pick up a lot of detail. Pixel came second, and iPhone just kind of fell flat for me, so at this point it goes to Samsung.
Now, we gotta talk about the selfie cameras on these bad boys, because most of us use them a lot. And for such tiny cameras, it's actually amazing at how good they're getting. So when I took these examples, I noticed Pixel kept softening my skin. iPhone ruined the sky, but Samsung got it just right. As for the wide selfies, the results were quite different, and I really liked iPhones the most. Here's another example I took where you can really see what Pixel is doing to my skin texture. iPhone's sky and clouds were weird again, but Samsung got it spot on. But importantly, the S23 has a 12 megapixel selfie cam, just like the iPhone, whereas the Pixel only has a 10.8. And in case you're wondering what the audio and visual is like on these cameras, this is what it sounds like on the S23 Ultra, this is what it sounds like on the 14 Pro Max, and this is what it sounds like on the Pixel 7 Pro. Finally, I also tested out low light selfies. iPhone actually did the worst job to me. Pixels was too blue, but Samsung nailed it. Before this test, I genuinely thought iPhone was gonna take much better selfies, but safe to say that Samsung came out on top. Nice. Also, make sure you sub if you wanna see even more crazy comparison videos like this. Now, one mode I don't see a lot of people talking about is this one, portrait mode. You can get some amazing shots in this mode, and although the background blur is not entirely real, these cameras do a fantastic job at making it look real. But the test really is about how well it can isolate or cut around the subject, and Samsung kind of struggled with this, iPhone did a great job, and Pixel's quality was terrible. Each of these phones also have a zoomed portrait mode, but they were very different from one another. Pixel's bad quality really surprised me a lot, but Samsung and iPhone both did great. Once again, this felt like a very close call, and I think most of this does come down to personal preference, but the iPhone just does do a better job at isolating the subject, which is kind of the entire point of portrait mode. So the 14 Pro Max gets this one. <laughs> Okay, so with video, Samsung can film in 8K resolution, which is double what iPhone and Pixel film in. And you might think this gives Samsung a huge boost in quality, so I went to London Central to really test this out. Now, all these videos look amazing, but if you pay close attention to Samsung, the exposure actually shifts a lot. Pixel's color was slightly off, but iPhone was the most color accurate, detailed, and smooth. The results were very similar here, with Samsung's exposure doing this kind of jumping thing, whereas the 14 Pro Max had the most impressive dynamic range. It was just as interesting to see how these puppies did in low light and the Pixel 7 Pro's quality was by far the worst. You'll notice Samsung's exposure shifting once again while iPhone did a great job. So surprisingly, although it kind of underperformed in photos, the iPhone definitely has the better overall video quality, but Samsung was not far behind. So the point for this round goes to the 14 Pro Max. So Apple and Samsung recently got Hollywood directors to use their phones as cinema cameras, but how do all their cinematic modes really compare? On the Pixel 7 Pro and iPhone, they're both called cinematic mode, but on Samsung, it's actually called portrait video. And how this mode works is it basically adds artificial blur to the background to make things look super cinematic and like it was shot on a proper camera and not just your phone. So the Pixel 7 Pro had lower resolution and in this example, the color was a bit off. Then if you look at the mountain in the background on Samsung and iPhone, iPhone's was a lot more stable than Samsung's. The Pixel 7 Pro was also the only one that couldn't do a zoomed cinematic mode, while iPhone did a great job at color accuracy, lighting, and also stabilization. And what I really love about iPhone is you can go back and edit the focus and blur after you filmed the video, whereas you can't exactly do that on the other two devices. So clearly Pixel did not compete, and because of that, I'm giving this one to the 14 Pro Max. It was so much more stable, the color was there, and it does just feel more cinematic than the Samsung. Now, these three phones have some of the best stabilization in the world, and I had to make sure stabilization was turned on every time before filming, and it's also important to note that the quality does drop when stabilization is on. But I was so impressed to see at how well all these phones stabilized the footage, and I'm not gonna lie, it was actually pretty tough to tell the difference between them. But iPhone's quality is slightly higher than the other two, and here's an example I took with the wide angle lens. Pixels is slightly less stable, but it's really not that bad. Then I also tested out the zoom lens for stabilization just to see what difference that made. And interestingly, iPhone was able to zoom in the most and keep the most amount of quality, but the other two still did a solid job. So the S23 Ultra and iPhone 14 Pro Max were almost identical when it came to stabilization, but the iPhone won this round only because of that higher resolution and that zoomed stabilization, which was unmatched by the other two. So the 14 Pro Max gets this point. 
So all three of these phones take raw pics, but you do need to make sure it's turned on. With Samsung, it's called Expert Raw. On iPhone, you just tap this button. And on Pixel, under camera settings, right over there, you can just tap it on. Raw pics are kind of the best shots to take because of how much you can edit them after you've taken the shot. You can bring out so much more details and completely change the colors to basically whatever you want. Out of all the raw shots I took, I gotta say, Samsung impressed me the most because of how much quality detail it was able to capture. But the other two were still very impressive. And because raw pictures are literally unedited by the phone and straight from the camera sensor, this is practically the best way to tell which camera is best. And Samsung definitely took this one. So these wouldn't be the best phones in the world if they couldn't do some pro video and all three of them can shoot in HDR. Here's a look at what the HDR video is like and Pixel does need a bit of work. Samsung's had this weird green tinge for some reason but iPhone got it spot on. Then this was a zoomed HDR example I took in full sunlight to test the colors and safe to say iPhone absolutely smashed it while Pixel and Samsung lacked in a couple different areas. This was such an interesting test because initially I thought Samsung was going to win this one but the the iPhone's HDR and Apple ProRes was just so much better than the others. And once again, Pixel wasn't really in the same playing field. So the 14 Pro Max wins this round. So the other day I posted three pictures for you guys to choose your favorite one without even knowing which phones took them. And I am shocked by the answers. These were the pictures I posted to my community tab and the picture that got the most votes from you guys, drum roll please, was C, the Google Pixel 7 Pro picture. So Pixel gets a point for viewer's choice and ultimately the Pixel 7 Pro is an amazing phone when it comes to capturing quick shots. Then the S23 Ultra takes some of the most amazing detailed photos but still has some catching up to do with video and while iPhone was pretty good at pictures, it absolutely smashed it when it came to video. So I would have to say, based on my analysis, the world's best smartphone camera goes to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Nice. But Samsung is not far behind. So the question is, do you take more photos, more videos, or more quick shots? Let me know down in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles!